Welcome to the Business Spotlight series. I'm Rick Plaskett, a certified business coach and uh, leadership coach here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Today, I've got with me Michael Fidel. He is the owner of Policy Fly, and he's my guest today. Uh, listen, today we're going to talk about his business, the challenges he has, some of his best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a successful business. If this is your first time on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe so you get notifications when we drop all of the new conversations just like this one today. So Michael, welcome and thank you for being here today. Pleasure, Rick, thanks for having me. Super, super. Hey, listen, so that everybody in the audience can know a little bit about you, give us a brief overview of your background, what policy fly is and, uh, and what what juices you? What sparks you when the alarm clock goes off in the morning? I mm, appreciate that. Uh, so I've been building digital products for over 15 years uh, in, di in a diverse set of industries. Uh, Policy Fly is the brainchild of working with insurance carriers. And if you're familiar with the industry, MGAs. Uh, to build policy management systems, uh, beginning from a bespoke point of view. Uh, so we were attacking this industry and the problems and challenges around policy management on a case-by-case -case basis going back almost 13 years ago uh, as a company. Uh, I'm one of the owners of Policy Fly. I fortunately, from a business point of view, I think we'll touch on this a few times during our time today. Um, I've got two other co-owners, co-founders of Policy Fly, uh, who I've worked with uh, for 15 years. Uh, previously, we built that digital studio uh, together uh, and then rolled out of that uh, Policy Fly. Uh, having great partners is a critical component of being successful uh, as a startup. And I think we'll unpack that a little bit more as we continue today. Uh, Policy Fly as a system, as a product, is focused again on policy management, uh, which effectively comes down to applying for insurance, being able to price insurance, being able to generate all of the documentation. These are the day-to-day -day operational deliverables that insurers need to worry about in order to scale and grow their insurance program. And our platform provides the utility for the insurance company to deliver that work, but do it online in a way that, that insurance agents and brokers in particular, less customers from a policy fly point of view, more agents and brokers on behalf of their customers, their policyholders, uh, to have access to this information, to have access to this technology so that they can work with these insurance companies more efficiently. Awesome, awesome. So you are the the special sauce, the electrons behind the scene, or even the favorite app on the phone that makes those people, the policy managers, um, look like they are superstars. Absolutely. Our goal is to empower those individuals to get more done. Super, super, super. So listen, to set the stage for the viewers, you mentioned you had two partners. So tell us a little bit about what your specific role is versus your partners uh, in the business. We, I think, have a really strong dynamic. Uh, at the highest level, um, we have a really like a really strong sense of the business to technology spectrum. Uh, and in that space, at a high level, uh, we have one co-founder, Marcel Esser, who has an exceptional, he's the CTO of uh, Policy Fly, and he represents a focus on that technology brain. And then my good friend from college uh, and our other co-founder, Corey Crosland, is CEO of Policy Fly. He represents a balance that really perfect balance that you 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 hope for of understanding the business and understanding the technology. And so he very much sits from a leadership point of view at that precipice in between the business goals and the technology challenges. 
And then I am very much focused on the business perspective. And within that domain, as CEO of PolicyFly, I am most concerned about the product experience, the client management and client needs on a day-to-day -day level, as well as on a visionary level. What are clients hoping for? What are we being, what are they stressing to us about the capabilities that we have, as well as the capabilities that we need to strive for? Uh, and it is a passion of mine. You talked about earlier what, what sort of gets me up out of bed. It's it's understanding the business point of view, being able to speak on behalf of the customer, the ability to understand their day-to-day -day friction, not just on the platform, but in, in just life. And in this mm -hmm. space, that's being an insurance manager, what is often called an underwriter. Um, that's the key individual that we're trying to, to help perform uh, on a day-to-day -day level understanding their needs like really understanding their needs what is what what is, what what scares them when they wake up what what is causing problems and headaches for them on a daily basis i'm the individual that i want them out of those three of us at a co-founder level I, i'm the one i want them i want them to call i want to understand i want to unpack that problem for 30 or 60 minutes I want to help talk them off that stress ledge and get them back into a place of confidence. And then I'm the one who gets to take that information back to the co-founding team, back to the company behind us and say, hey, this is the problem. And I understand it. I, I've, I've worked with this client to work around the issues that they're, they're, that they're dealing with uh, on our platform, even off our platform to better understand at the ground level where their pain point is, is coming from. And what it takes for them to deal with that problem today, because the and and I think you can pick this up in my 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 sort of passion for it. I need to understand the context fully, the best of my ability, in order to build the best piece of technology to solve that problem. If I pretend to understand it, if I pretend to sort of speak it speak to it from just an industry point of view at a high level, I'm going to miss the context that really matters. That again, from a technology standpoint, I need to better understand in order to get it right. Super, thank you. And and as you do and juggle all of those different roles, facing the customer, understanding the customer, and then bringing that back to your leadership team, how would you break down the percentage of time that you're working in the business on the job versus strategically visioning and planning on working on the business and building the business for better or worse. Um, Cause I could, I, I, I immediately, my disclaimer is I probably spend more time working in the business mm -hmm. uh, inside of it, dealing with the day to day um, than maybe I should at a COO level. Uh, I'd say it's an 80, 20. I spend 80% of my time doing the job and, um, but I'm super passionate about the impact that being focused on the ground level has. We're a small team. So one, we're about 25 employees at this point. Getting the job done and being there to support the team, being there to take a leadership role and getting work done sets a tone that has great value uh, at a business level. Um, I think anyone working for uh, ownership wants to see ownership get roll up their sleeves and, and, and continue to put a lot of sweat into the business instead of managing them and, and focusing on, uh, just, you know, shouting orders and, and expecting everyone else to do the work. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's really important that there is a vision and that a lot of time and effort is being put into that vision uh, in order for the business to have a better future ahead. Uh, so I'm I'm very cognizant that I need to be able to pull myself up out of the day-to-day -day, uh, and focus on making sure that that strategy is being reevaluated constantly and that the projects we're working on, the programs we're onboarding from an insurance point of view uh, are successful so that we aren't just spinning our wheels as a business. So in in that business, you you mentioned internal, external, and working 
in the business. Um, do you have many competitors out there? And if so, what makes policy fly unique against that competitive? And, uh, and what's the extra benefit that you provide for your customers? There are several competitors uh, in our space. Uh, fortunately, the industry is moving in a direction towards more specialism. And one of the challenges in our space, in the policy management sector, is as specialization increases, there are more often new programs that are starting from scratch who need a technology solution that is priced with that constraint, that revenue constraint in mind. It's a rather obvious one. They have no revenue. So the investment they're making on technology needs to be more flexible. Policy management players working with your largest insurance carriers in the country don't offer a model that is priced for that program, that insurance program. Uh, so that right there is one advantage of policy fly working with us. Um, there are other policy management systems, though, in our space that are more appropriately priced with insurance programs in mind versus the whole insurance carrier. Um and in that space, we are competitively set to deliver more value because our technology is better. Uh, the, the technology we're building on is, is just newer, fresher, easier to work with, more nimble and able to, to add features quickly over time. Um, some of those features are AI driven. Um, some of them are just sort of the modern front end capabilities that you'll find with web-based technology than than legacy code, uh, coding plat code, coding models. Um, we also, I think, I've already stressed on the level with which I personally sort of set a tone in diving deep to understanding the client challenges. So the service that we provide on top of the technology is a key component of our secret sauce. We have some competitors in our industry that sell no code, low code, you buy it, you use it, but you're sort of on your own uh, as, a, as a model. We are putting our bets in a different direction. We believe that service is critical here. Um, and we sell a package of not only the technology, but the service included. And we think that that makes us better over time because we understand what the client is trying to do at a very deep level. And it informs the choices we make when we look at our roadmap and where we spend our time and what value we think one feature will have in the long run versus another is just better informed because we fully understand what the client is trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Michael, you have really at least expressed to me as a insurance Neanderthal, an understanding of what makes policy fly unique and how and where your Bennett, your, company can solve others in the industry uh, and solve their problems and make their life easier. In business, all of that secret sauce, service, and product, you can have the best, and there's histories of the best service, the best product, and they're just not around anymore. Let's switch gears a little bit into marketing. What mm -hmm. marketing do you do that lets the universe know you exist? And what is your number one, number two, best marketing strategy for bringing you the new customers and the new business? So your marketing strategy is going to be heavily dictated by what your product is, what is your service, how is it sold, what is the lead time on average for turning a prospect into a client? How much does your product or service cost will play a critical role in, in, in how long the buying process takes. In our industry, we are selling an enterprise level product, um, generally speaking, an uh, annual fee. Uh, so for us, uh, there is a deep sales cycle where 
the process of introducing yourself to a prospect, building a relationship, and ultimately turning them into a client could take multiple years. Now, best case scenario, people fall in love with the policy fly product. And we very much try to move quickly if they are ready to go, if they are ready for an insurance platform mm -hmm. and policy management system, they can turn policy fly on in a matter of weeks. But that's the best case scenario. And, and that is an outlier in the insurance industry. This is an industry that's known to move slower. So I just want to sort of set that mm -hmm. stage because the landscape of your industry is your marketing strategy. And so this, the, our, my, my approach is very much dictated by the realities of what I sell and the industry that I'm in trying to sell it. With that, the answer to your question is, one, building relationships for the long term is a critical just methodology. You've got to approach every initial conversation with the expectation in insurance in particular that you cannot hard sell who you're talking to. You have to earn trust from the get-go. And my goal is always to make sure that that conversation is enlightening, that I'm sharing something professionally that is powerful and of interest. But at the same time, I want to make sure that that individual enjoys the conversation and will be open to having another one whenever we find the opportunity for that to mm -hmm. occur. So I can't stress enough how important that is from the get-go. Whether your marketing strategy includes an ad budget or not, includes you going to a conference or not, you got to take advantage of making sure that that conversation is interesting enough, is appreciated in terms of your energy level to at least give you the best chance to have another conversation down the line. Mm -hmm. So that guides me in everything I do. So uh Knowing the conferences that you within, oh, please feel free to follow up on on that. Oh, I was just uh, as you were going through, uh, you've you've made your sales process very very clear, and the fact that it is a long time. Um, wanted to to focus you on what do you use in the area of marketing that's working for you to get that next new contact into your sales pipeline and understanding that the sales pipeline may be a very, very long time, but at some point you've got to enter that pipeline. And so what are you using? What's, what's your bread and butter go-to to gaining those new contacts? Industry conference conferences. Okay. Uh, and paying attention to industry media, LinkedIn being a very valuable source for identifying individuals who are going to be most receptive to conversations. Awesome. Super, super, super. Thank you. Thank you. Um, listen, we've spent a bunch of time focusing on the business and some of the practices of what you've done to get you here. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of switch gears a little bit and let's go forward. We spent uh, a whole lot of time in the rearview mirror. Now let's look out the windshield and let's look at fast forward in the next three to five years. Where do you see the business? So I see us still very much rooted in the policy management space. Uh, I'm not projecting any particular pivot in approach uh, there. What I think is going to happen in our space is there's going to be a explosion in the number of quotes that policyholders and their agents or brokers representing them are going to have access to. That's going to be one of the fundamental shifts in the insurance industry. 
And the reason that that's going to occur and why that's important to policy fly is the industry has predominantly and will continue to predominantly communicate and exchange information through emails and PDF documents and or Excel documents. There's from a specialty point of view in particular, a lot of information where to assess risk. Um, when you think about, let's say you're a large commercial trucking company, you have hundreds of vehicles or you're a commercial property investor or owner, and you've got hundreds of locations. Your agent or broker has several documents that represent your business that need to be evaluated in order to understand the risk. And currently, when you email that information from your desktop to another insurance company, and they, they look at all of those attachments, they are there is an extreme difficulty to do anything with that amount of data. Mm -hmm. And a lot of tooling, especially in the policy management space, is being built to help insurance companies consume that information, potentially fuse it with other third-party data that's available to better underwrite the business, to, to look at it from a rating, pricing, risk point of view. And the more we're able to, as an industry, unpack all of that information automatically and serve it up to a human being for a final decision more effectively, the more often insurance companies are gonna be able to attempt to win that business. Whereas today, the number of potential opportunities for any given client are just a lot lower. The number mm -hmm. of insurance companies that can actually take a swing at providing a price, uh, uh, providing an assessment of what coverages can they provide to compete for that business will be profoundly smaller today than it will be in the future. And that's where the industry is going. So three to five years from now, being able to support that movement from a policy fly point of view will not only make us more relevant, but will potentially make us a leader in this space. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Now, I was just curious as you were saying this, you've shared where policy flies view is in goals for the next three to five years. You've already been with the company and in the industry 15 years, five years from now, that's 20 years. Where do you see your own personal goals and, and your partner goals? Is there a, a change coming? Is any of you uh, at the point of looking at potential exit strategies from the company or are you planning on it being status quo for the next three to five years? Definitely within the next three to five years, uh, I would see the three of us not going anywhere. We are fully invested mentally and emotionally on, on getting this right. And PolicyFly as a company is formally only six years old. Uh, so our, our best work is still in front of us. Um, we see ourselves scaling uh, tremendously in that time frame. So my hope would be we are dealing with some professional challenges that would be quite exciting. The goal is client success more than anything else. The next client on our platform, the existing clients that we're working with, their success is the most important thing we wake up and worry about. But for fun, I'll postulate that PolicyFly will likely be north of 100 employees in the next five years. Employee count for any other business owner out there isn't a metric any of us need to aim for. Profitability, client success are way more important than how many employees you have. In fact, we all want to be the most efficient business we can be. The less employees we need to get there, the better. But that is definitely something that for fun, while we're talking about where can this, where will this all go? That's definitely something that I would foresee being correlated. That'd be a lot of fun. I love working with people. That's something that, that I am particularly passionate about. It's something that I bring to the table. I'd like to think I'm a lot of fun to work with. Um, I look forward to being in a position 
to build a business that is providing a future for more human beings um, than we do today, uh, a successful professional future. So I, I look forward to that scale. I, I want I want that scale. While I want to be as efficient as possible, it's exciting to me to think, wow, could I run a hundred person company? That'd be amazing. I'd love to be able to put be put, put myself in that position. Um, from a client standpoint, we're looking at rather seismic shifts in the number of clients we work with. Um, we'd be going from client a client count uh, north of fifteen right now to potentially north of a hundred in that time frame as well. We're looking at making you know exponential growth happen in the next three to five years. Not only is it a lot of fun to work with the human beings within our walls, but also the human beings that we're impacting from a client point of view is also something that I'm just as passionate about. I love the client dynamic. I Again, I've stressed this already. I love being someone that they entrust their stress to. When they know they've got a problem and they need to solve it and it revolves around our capabilities, I want them to celebrate our successes with us. I absolutely want them to come to me with the challenge to a full extent. Every conversation is unique. Every conversation is really interesting. Being able to do that with, with 10X the clients we have today is something that I would be really excited to see come to fruition. You know, you mentioned a, a whole lot of exciting opportunities and numbers there. Um, you know, pretty much 4X the number of employees, um, 10X the number of customers. Um, have you and your partners in that three to five year plan looked at who do you have to become? What what and how do you change? How does your leadership change? How does your uh, specific role change? You love working with people. Um, you know, what what do you need to become to be a better mentor, to be a better uh, judge of people? as you're now dealing with a hundred people, you know, it's interesting. Uh, so many, so many people, when I first talked to them, you know, they are afraid of doing two X because it means they have to work twice as much. I can see in your presentation, you're looking at, you know, four X in number of people. Nah, I'm going to be working less than that. Um, what, what's your planning process for, like I said, you, let's just focus in on leadership and what type of person you and your partners need to become to have those other parameters fall into line and hit those goals? Yeah. My gut is that the ability to scale your leadership in your business particularly comes down to one, having a razor sharp focus on what as a business you need to do in order to accomplish the next checkpoint in growth. So your day-to-day -day and how you prioritize it has to revolve around that critical focus. If you're making the wrong choice as a business owner, as a leader, and how you spend your time day-to-day that will set a false positive tone that will impact the rest of your business negatively. Same issue. If you've got it right, you need to then make sure that you are delegating responsibility and managing your team and their focus effectively. So your house is in order. Cool. What about the rest of your team? Are they focused on the right things? That is incredibly hard. Being able to develop processes as you scale help you get there. There's good reason why in hindsight, it looks so obvious that you were going to be successful because you can see the roadmap that you've laid, the groundwork you've laid behind you. There's no mistakes. Uh, there's no mistaking, at least, how you got from 10 employees to 100 when you look back in time. But seeing it, ahead of you is incredibly difficult because again, the context of all the friction you're going to face is still in front of you. You need to, you need to see it for yourself in order to understand how you make small tweaks that get you there. 
Um, so to me, that's that that's where my mind goes is I need to know what it's going to take. I need to be able to establish the right checkpoint. That is preferably the smallest denominator between me and the next level of success. Do I have a razor sharp focus on what it's going to take to be more successful in a month than I am today? Can I set that goal? Can I see it? And can I, on a daily basis, prioritize my time properly? And as a manager, prioritize the rest of my team's time properly. How simple can I make their day to day mm -hmm. so that there are, there aren't a lot of distractions? Um, that's my that, that's how I take that. I'm, I'm curious for your thoughts. All right. Well, first of all, you are you, you are spot on, and I love your answer. Um, it, what got you here isn't going to get you there. Title of a famous book. Um, you asked for my answer to that is uh, you know my I graduated from West Point and four years of that education in military leadership and another ten years in uh, as a veteran in the army. And the whole point of our mission planning was to project into the future. It wasn't based on the past. It was to project into the future. And the base core of that was, just like you said, to have all of the soldiers below you know the fundamentals of why you're doing something, how you're doing it, and then the last piece is the what. And when we are successful in putting those mm -hmm. pieces into that order, um, it doesn't matter. It, we always talked about you would spend hours, if not days, on a mission plan. And that mission plan went out the window after the first bullet flew. But the mission was still accomplished because we had that level. And it's more the context than it is the content. You know, the nuts and bolts, the the number of people, the number of dollars, the number of customers, those are all the nuts and the bolts. But it's the context that holds all of those together and drives you into the future. But great answer for you. And thank you for asking me that question. If you can't tell that I just love to talk about that uh, and, and many times uh, with my clients, that military training part comes out. And we just throw it through a thesaurus and call it a strategic business plan instead of a combat plan. Uh, listen, you have shared a lot of ground yeah. and we've yeah, covered a that. lot today. I really appreciate it, Michael. What I'd like to do here is uh, I want to wrap it up with two pieces. The first one is I want to hit you with what I call the rapid fire questions. About three or four questions here, just top of your mind. And then at the end of this, I want to... Uh, give you the ability to share with our audience how they can get in touch with you. Okay. So let's start off with the rapid fire questions. What would you say your key to success was? Being passionate and willing to take a risk. Awesome. What's a piece of advice that you would give to another business owner that uh, um, may have the same challenges as you do? Uh, I'd recommend considering from the get-go, don't do it alone. Find a, a great business partners. Uh, if And when you do, be receptive to what it takes to be a great teammate. Be humble. Uh, but at the same time, carry that passion into every conversation and stay committed to fully understanding the decisions that you are going to make on a daily basis, on an annual basis at a higher level. Uh, don't, 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 don't let yourself be talked into a decision at the same time. Um, so it, that is just such a delicate balance, but a critical element to being successful as a team leader. That's awesome. Thank you so much. What's uh, what's one book or article that you've read recently that you would share with everybody saying, man, this was great? Interesting. Um, I would say um, 
I'm a I'm a bigger uh, proponent of um, like TED Talks, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm just more of an oratory uh, learner. Um, Simon Sinek's Start with Why, which you sort of touched on, whether that's top of mind, but the the why, how, what, and in that order is. I think one of the most fundamental truths uh, to being a successful person, uh, let alone a business owner uh, that I've ever watched and heard in my life. Awesome. You, you and I are twins of a different mother there. Um, if, if you like, start with why. Have you uh, have you listened to his TED talk on why leaders eat last? Yes, I have. Uh, okay. He's obviously been quite successful Talking about this exact topic for good reason. Um, yeah, he's an incredible presenter and he's spot on when it comes to creating great leaders. Super, super. We could go on forever. We're, we're not going to promote Simon Sinek anymore right here. No, no, um, but <laughs> but I, I appreciate taking the opportunity to do. It is. It is. I mean, you know, you can see the energy on both of us as soon as we start talking about it because we get it and, and just yep. want to eat it with a big old spoon. Um, if you had to choose one area of your business that you could immediately improve and wake up on Monday and it was better, what would that area be? Mm. As much as I talked about it, it's focus on execution more than anything else. Uh, the hardest part is actually creating the sausage. Uh, anyone, you know, it's interesting uh, being a business owner for 15 years and making less money in those 15 years than I probably, I 100% would have so far if I had just stayed at a large corporation and focused on, you know, driving my career in a traditional direction, certainly expect to make a lot more money from this point forward. I'm investing my time because I have that expectation. Um, but what I, um, what I feel passionate about, what, ask that question again, cause I was going in a direction and I, I just talked myself <laughs> out of my response. If you had to choose only one area of your business that yes. you could immediately improve, yes. what would that be? Thank you. Thank you. So I got, I get carried away because we all want to make money here. <laughs> and, and, and while I gave this deep disclaimer as the like, Hey, I could stay as a sausage maker at someone else's company. Right. And I would have made more money in the last 15 years than I have as a business owner. Um, so my stress point here is everyone has a great idea though. I could have, I could have left my job 15 years ago simply because I have an idea. Everyone's got an idea. And I'm more passionate now about pointing that out because the reality is I've got several ideas in the last 15 years that I've looked around in and outside of this industry, just watching TV commercials and been like, hey, I had that idea. I, was, I had that idea 15 years ago. I thought about that. My favorite one just for fun is two years before I ever heard about Instagram, I was like, I hate Facebook. I'm so tired of Facebook. I love the pictures. I want the pictures. I want the pictures without the Facebook. That's Instagram. Who probably didn't have that idea as well? That's why Instagram did so well. Execution is what matters. Learning about the friction uh, around what it takes to get from point A to point B is the hard part. And if you can't stomach actually doing the work, then by no means are you prepared to be a business owner. So if you are taking on that challenge, if you are going to be a founder or a co-founder, be ready to roll up your sleeves. The idea alone is not good enough. The execution is where you either make it or you break it. You know, Michael, thank you for that plug. If you look on the bottom of my screen, you can see I work for Action Coach. I don't work for, gee, that's a great idea, Coach. You know, many people read learn from sign and cynic and everything else and come up with wonderful ideas. But the difference between those people that achieve, those people that are happy, and those that aren't are the ones that were willing to take action to get to that ultimate goal and desire of what they are. So listen, Michael, before we wrap up today, how can people get in touch with you? What's your preferred method of having someone who's watching us today follow up with you and get in contact? 
Uh, super active on LinkedIn. Uh, so I would say find me on LinkedIn, reach out if you are interested in additional advice as a business owner. Uh, I'd, I'd welcome uh, your outreach, regardless of industry. Happy to help, especially if you took the time to listen to our conversation today. Please do feel free to reach out. Um, I'm a networker through and through. Um, beyond that, if you are in the specialty insurance industry, uh, please definitely reach out. Uh, if the uh, area uh, around program and insurance growth uh, and innovation is of interest to you, uh, I would love to continue the conversation uh, and uh, reaching out through LinkedIn would definitely be the best way to go about that. If you want to learn more about PolicyFly in general, before you do, PolicyFly.com is the right place to go. Super. Thank you so much, Michael, uh, it, you for joining us today and for sharing your journey. And, you know, you took me in a couple of places that even though we talked several times before, all brand new and all exciting to me. And thank you to the audience here today for watching. You never know what you might learn or what might inspire you to do something great. So keep listening to all of the interviews that we post up here. Make it a great day and bye for now.